Well, in talking to a lot of leaders in the fishing industry today, they are trying to decipher through the complexities of these uh, of these trade documents what will be an additional impact on the fleet behind me. Now, here's an irony. So take cod, for example. Cod is not taxed, in this case tariffed, if it goes to a Chinese dinner table. But if it goes over there, like a lot of cod and other fish products do, is processed there, it is said to be taxed by a U.S. tariff as that comes back from China. Like the waves themselves, seafood is an industry which has ridden the economic ups and downs for generations as the price of fish and crab fluctuate. Many of the fishing vessels based here work the big catches up in Alaska's Bering Sea, and the U.S.-China trade war is cutting two ways. Our price has probably gone up 20 percent on steel, tools. Charlie King skippers a salmon tender and spends time in the off-season fixing boats. They're paying for U.S. tariffs on foreign steel and aluminum, but then there's tariffs on fish, including salmon and crab, going into China. Is there a lot of concern down here about this whole tariff business? Yes. There is. A lot of it, mostly with the seafood companies, but, you know, the fishermen themselves, and it's all trickle down. King says so far the Chinese tariffs on fish haven't hit him, and others we spoke with, even trade organizations, say despite the tariffs, times are pretty good. I don't think it's been bad. I think there's a big boom of, of people that actually eat seafood. This fisherman just returned from Bristol Bay, Alaska, where he owns the Kihar. Cod, uh, prawns, salmon, crab. Where does it end up? Well, I'd say about 50% of the crab I catch goes to, goes to the market and gets shipped probably over to China, and the other 50% I sell directly to the public. We connect and we talk regularly with a lot of folks around the state, including seafood. Lori Otto Punk heads the Washington Council on International Trade. She says there's often a lag between when a trade action is taken and the impact is felt. Have we lost any jobs yet? You know, we are we are still looking at that. There's, you know, as I mentioned, there's sort of a laggard effect as it relates to trade. We know that we are seeing double digit decreases in certain sectors because of the trade war. Um, how immediate we will see those job impacts, we don't know. But we do know that there are about 28,000 jobs in Washington state related to trade with China. So like I said, everybody's still sorting this out. Will there be additional impacts and well, when will the impacts from last year really start to kick in if they do. Now, seafood companies who market this uh, this product are trying to sell it to find other markets, other countries, and in some cases, like we've seen on other products, try to absorb the cost to make the impact on the Chinese consumer that much less so they don't lose those markets. And as Lori was saying, trade is a very relationship-based business. Live at Fisherman's Terminal, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.